What is good guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry for the delay in uploads. I know it's been one to two months or so since my last video. Just been busy traveling the world, went to China, went to the UK. Um, been working pretty hard outside of that and with strongman training. Just really did not have the energy and time to do uh, YouTube videos. It's a little bit different to just film a top set for Instagram versus a full on YouTube video where I gotta change the angle of the camera, film warm up sets, all that stuff. I kind of got to the point where I just want to get in, get my train done, and get out of there. So, but now we're back to a normal schedule, back sticking around Madison for a little bit, um, training for powerlifting, seeing that just over 11 weeks out from the American Pro today. And I will be getting back to a consistent schedule for filming those, hoping to do like a video a week, kind of update you guys on how that train is going. And if you guys are interested, I did upload what my training plan is going to look like for the next 12 weeks or for the 12 weeks leading into the America Pro on the Proven Strength app. So if you guys want to follow along, check that out. Link for that is in the description below. If you want to try something else out, we also have programs that are three, four, five day length, um, beginner, intermediate, advanced, as well as power building blocks and a bodybuilding training template. So. If you guys want to check that out, link for that is in the description below. Download the Proven Strength app. You also get added to our private Discord. You can ask questions, get form checks, talk about training, all that fun stuff. If you guys are using the Proven Strength app, please tag myself and Proven Strength on Instagram. We'd love to share those videos. But uh, yeah, so we're back to, all right, so the strongman comp. So I have done a few strongman shows in the past, kind of smaller ones, such as like LA Strongest Man, Chicago Fed Expo and a few smaller local competitions, but this was the first time going against um, the the best strongman in the world under 200 pounds. So um, definitely very intimidating. Um, going into the show at the very beginning of competition, I was kind of hoping for like a top five finish. And then as I started looking through the roster and just seeing how good everyone on the roster was, it switched to top five to being happy with the top 10 finish. Um, anything more than top 10, I would have been very ecstatic with. So to end up where I did at a third place, actually time for second, um, I'm beyond proud of how I did at the competition and I'm, I had such a blast with it. So for all my powerlifter followers, I would highly recommend possibly giving Strongman a shot. It was a nice change up of training and I definitely feel like it has benefited at least my squat and deadlift. Um, I'll tell you so far, <laughs> my bench has been very bad coming back from Strongman training, but um, I have 11 weeks to fix that leading into the American Pro and hopefully it comes back, but we'll see. It's, it has been pretty rough and a little bit discouraging sometimes, but squat and deadlift are stronger than they've ever been. So yeah, I would highly recommend giving Strongman a shot. And uh, yeah, let's get into the competition. So it was six events. I actually ended up having to do seven because of the tiebreaker for second, which I was not happy about because uh, I was pretty gassed at that point. I was pretty much at that point where I was just accepting that I was going to take third because I, I put it all out there on the last two, two events. But uh, event number one, log clean and press. Um, so it started at 120 kilos, did 10 kilo jumps up until about world record level. Um, I knew a lot of people are going to kind of get like 120, 130. 140, 150 was kind of going to be where a lot of people fell off. At the beginning of the prep, I was feeling pretty good about 140 and then maybe making a push for 150. Um, but it almost felt like as I was like tweaking the form and kind of getting a little bit better on form, I was getting away from like my strength, which was just straight up being strong. And uh, the trip to China kind of threw off my log training. And unfortunately, I still thought 140 was going to be a pretty good number going into the show. But um, yeah, 120, 130 at competition day felt good. And then 140, 
the clean felt pretty strong, but I kind of lost it in the sum or in the um, ceiling lights and just lost my balance, lost a lot of tightness in my core, and unfortunately couldn't recover. Was not able to lock out and um, gave it one more shot, but unfortunately I just pretty gassed at that point. Um, I didn't have too big of a cut for the show, but it definitely zapped me a little bit. I think I was kind of in like a little bit of a weird in between with the cut where I didn't do a full like recomp. And a, um, I think if I was doing strong or a pop to me, I maybe would have taken the recomp a little bit more seriously. Also, being an international competition made it a little bit more difficult in that like the foods and stuff that I normally would eat weren't as available um, in the area we were staying at in the UK. So it did make the recomp a little bit different and I do feel like that kind of affected me a little bit, which is actually a good thing to understand and learn from for future international competitions, whether it be strongman or powerlifting. Um, but to only finish with 130 kilos on log was definitely probably the biggest disappointment for the day for me. Um, I was really hoping for that 140 and hitting that 140 would have put me in a good position going forward in, this, in the whole meet. So the way the um, order goes for strawman um, is based on the previous event. So event two was the axle deadlift and the order for that event is determined by the log. So if you take first place in the log, you get to go last in the axle, which lets you know how many reps you need to place in a certain position. And that would have been very helpful going forward. But um, so the log did not quite go as well as I would have liked. Ended up with 130 kilos. And I think that was 11th place or whatever. It was on the screen. But um, going to axle deadlift, that was the event I was probably looking forward to kind of the most, but also not because to do an AMRAP deadlift on an axle bar very early in a competition, I learned from doing full event days leading into the show that that event sucks. And um, it was very much the case on meet day where ended up with 10 reps. I knew um, there was like myself and maybe four or five other guys that were in that double digit range and that ended up being the case. I think I tied with two or three other people for second place and then um, Dan Benson took first with 11 reps. Uh, I was kind of disappointed I didn't win that one but I knew going into it that A, I'm not as good at reps and B, they got to use a deadlift suit. I mean I had the option to use a deadlift suit but I just didn't take it because I didn't want to try and learn it over 12 weeks and throw off my deadlift form any more than it already was. And that definitely gives an advantage for rep work. And maybe going forward, if I were to do another competition, I would consider getting a deadlift suit, um, not just for getting like an extra rep or two, but also kind of saving my glutes, hips, all that for the rest of the competition going forward. Um, I definitely think that would help in um, limiting the fatigue from that from just the deadlift. Um, so taking second overall on the axle, I was pretty happy with. Um, going into the third event, which was the Who's Felt Sandbag Carry, um, I was very lucky in that I got to kind of practice with a similar one. Um, I had the Rogue one, which is a little bit smaller. It's actually, the one we have is only rated for 200 pounds, but we filled it with lead shot to get it up to about 340 pounds. So it was actually a little bit above um, the competition weight. And going into that one, I was actually very excited about that one because every time I've done a Hoosfeld, I've done pretty well with it. Um, I trained with Martins on one. I was able to do like a 400 pound or 410 or something like that. Um, and it felt pretty comfortable. Um, and doing that one in the gym was probably one of my more favorite events to train just because um, I kind of liked that having to like dig deep on the event. And yeah, ended up doing pretty well on that one. Um, was one of the later guys to go and um, ended up taking third on that one. Um, yeah, 
wish I could have gone. I was like a couple inches away from taking second, which was actually the first place at the moment. So um, I was a little disappointed that I couldn't get that extra two feet or whatever I needed to move into first place, but um, I'll, t I'll take third overall on that one. Um, we had a little bit of a break after that one, which was <laughs> very much needed. Um, as a powerlifter, I'm only used to doing three events in a day. To know that I have to do those three events, I was already gassed at that point. And to think that I was only halfway done with the day was <laughs> kind of uh, a little demoralizing. So we had a little like 30 minute break at that point. Um, came back for farmers carry, which was um, 135 kilos, 297 pounds, and it was 10 meters down, 10 meters back, and then one more 10 meter run. So with two turn or three picks, um, definitely made it a little difficult. And I know everyone else was kind of complaining about the handles being a little bit more slick than what we were expecting. I think only one person was able to make it without dropping them at all. Um, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, um, about a week and a half before the competition, I was doing farmers and tore a callus really bad. And I think that definitely uh, set me up to not do as well. Um, it ripped pretty bad on that event on the day. And yeah, had to tape it up. And uh, really wish I could have made it without dropping it. I was, I was pretty close. I think I had like three meters left or so, and unfortunately I just couldn't make it. But still, still did pretty well in that event overall. I think I took fourth or so on that one. Um, going into the fifth event, hand was all ripped up, taped up. Um, luckily that event really didn't have much grip. It was um, a yoke carry into a sandbag medley. Um, I didn't get the video for that one, but um, so it was a 750 pound yoke, 340 kilos, 10 meters down, and then run back, grab 220 kilo sandbags, 264 pounds, and load them over the yoke. So for that event, the yoke actually went a lot better than I thought it was gonna go, but um, the first sandbag went super well. I actually um, almost stumbled and fell on the first sandbag, which would have been just devastating, but I was able to kind of recover and uh, get that one over. The problem came on the second sandbag where I picked it up and I felt like all the energy in my body just drained. Like I had nothing left to give at that point. I lost all the, all the strength in my quads. Um, I was able to carry it over, get it to the yoke and try to load it. I came up like two inches short and <laughs> Unfortunately, was not able to get it. I just had zero energy at that point and could not lift it over this yoke. So me missing that yoke or that second sandbag was quite a big hit. I think it dropped me down quite a bit on the standings. Um, I did the first sandbag in the yoke fairly quickly where if I had gone that second one, I would have been much higher on the standings. Um, but to miss it by you know an inch or two was uh, a little heartbreaking. And at that point, I did not know if I could do the last event. I just had zero energy left. But um, <laughs> uh, took, I, I basically didn't warm up at all because I was like, if I warm up, I'm going to just burn all the energy I have left, um, which was power stairs. So the last event, power stairs, was actually um, with the, the Hoosfeld sandbag, the event I was probably most looking forward to. is honestly like the most fun to train. And... Um, it's just, it's fun. If you have a chance to do one, I would, I would give it a shot. But uh, so going into prep, it was supposed to be two implements. I think it was like 165 kilos and 185 maybe, or 180. I can't remember. But um, it was four steps, but they changed it about six weeks out to three implements at 160, 170, 180 kilos and three steps each. So... Um, I think it was like one, you had to do one extra step and a little bit less of the duck walk. Um, that said, ended up being my best event on the day. Took first overall and very happy with how it went over, and uh, could not be more happy with ending the day. 
in that note. Unfortunately, it did not end the day because there was a tie with myself and another guy for second place. Um, I was ready to just be like, hey, let's just split it. Um, but he's super competitive. I mean, I, <laughs> I respect that, but I, I would have honestly just given it to him at that point because I was so tired. But uh, yeah, the last we had a tiebreaker event. Um, I was pushing for like a heavy axle deadlift or something of that sort, but they wanted to pick something that was um, closest between us on the events. And an axle deadlift would have been pretty dangerous at that point in the competition with how tired we were and also the fact that we'd have to like warm up for it again. So they picked the Hoosfeld sandbag for a max hold. Um, that was a case where his experience won out. He was able to set the sandbag super high up on his chest, basically basically resting it completely on his legs, whereas I just picked it up and was trying to bear hug it and held it for as long as I could. Unfortunately, dropped it after about 45 seconds or so. And that was, that was all she wrote. So I ended up taking third overall and um, I overall had a blast going to it and look forward to competing in the future. Um, not much else to say on it. Uh, you guys can keep up with the powerlifting training leading to the American Pro. Um, training's going pretty well so far. You'll we'll kind of update you guys on that as it goes, and uh, I guess we'll catch you in the next video.